Hello everybody! First of all, I would like to tell you this video is for the people who are beginning with digital painting and choose Krita as the first option to learn. So if you are a mid-level or advanced user, probably you will see things in this video that you already know. In this video, we are going to talk about downloading Krita, drivers, how to install Krita properly, welcome screen, how to create our first image, the brushes, the workspace and color, and how to save your images and work safe. So are you ready? Let's get started. Everything has changed a lot since the first digital painting programs. Nowadays, we are living exciting times because we are surrounded by creative applications. Today, more than ever, we can paint with a lot of different tools. And that's great, but sometimes we are saturated by the amount of options we have available. If you are here, it is because you are interested in Krita and you want to start painting and creating your own world. Maybe you have seen a beautiful image done with Krita and that increases your curiosity about the Krita software. Well, this video is to make easier your first experience with Krita. Since the early stages, Krita has been a program with a mid-level interface without too much buttons that distract or intimidate you. That is always appreciated because we don't have to learn a complex interface, but we can adjust it to fit our needs. If you haven't installed the program, here you have some tips. First of all, where do I get the Krita software? Many people look for software in pages that offer a lot of software, but this is not recommended because we can find bad surprises like malware or spyware. So if you want to paint safe, the best site for downloading Krita is the official website krita.org. All the links will be in the description below. We can look for download button or just press the big button Get Krita Now, a very descriptive button. Then we can choose the platform we want for Krita. That is, if I use for example Linux, Windows or Macintosh. We can download Krita and while it's downloading, let's take a look what we have here. As you can see, we can also go to Windows Store or Steam platform if we want to get Krita as an app. It's paid content, but helps to pay the main developer of Krita, Bodywin, really important. Also, you can see there are something called Night Builds. Krita has two different versions, so what do you prefer? Stable version or development version? What Krita is the best for me? It's a strange question, isn't it? Well, if you need a stability to finish your project comfortably, the most usual choice is downloading the stable version. It is the one that has the main features to finish the job. But if you want to be trying the latest features and even give your feedback after that, then you can download the development version. And yes, a development release can crash. And yes, that's good. Hmm. It is good because this allows us to refine the development and let Krita as polish it as possible for the next release. And the good thing is that I can load 90 builds and don't delete my stable release. So you choose. We have already downloaded Krita. And now what? Drivers. It is convenient to download the latest drivers from our graphic tablet. Having our equipment updated is always a good idea, and we can save many problems both in Krita and in other software. So invest a little time in getting everything ready. I wait for you. Once Krita is downloaded and you have updated the drivers, you can install Krita. If you find issues with tablet, verify that your tablet is compatible with Krita. Krita covers a wide range of devices, but sometimes we can find weird behaviors. So here is the link to check it out, also in the description below. Some users have reported problems with rings around the cursor in Windows 10, so please see this video if you are in this situation. Installing Krita is not complicated. Once it is downloaded, make a click on the file to install. Also make sure Windows Cell is marked in order to see the Krita files in our file browser in Windows. If you are a Linux user, you can download app image. 
Once it is downloaded, then you have to make the file executable checking the control permissions. Just right click in your app image file and select properties and then make it executable. Ok, open Krita and the splash screen appears loading the resources. After a few seconds, now you can see the program interface. Now we have a kind of welcome screen. This screen gives a lot of important information. For example, we can see the latest news from Krita, thanks to the Xbox, link it to the official account of Krita Painting. And also very interesting links that helps you to learn more about the world of Krita and his community. Also, we can go directly to the manual and learning a lot reading good contents created by Krita developers. We can go directly to the forum and look for help. Just register an account, log in and you can talk directly to developers and share your ideas or artwork to get feedback from another users. A direct contact with programmers and actors. Nice. Here on the first column we see new file with the common circuit control N and if I may click on it a new window appears and I see many options. You can choose a template or create your own file with the size you need. If you don't create an image, some parts of the Krita's interface doesn't work, like brush selection, color selection and so on. Only menus are available. This is logical because there is nothing to work with. So let's make our first image in Krita. Go to custom document and choose the file size you want to create and don't worry about all the options, we will take a look to them in another video. Give a size and click on create button. Once you create an image, you can start working on it. There are interfaces that are very complex and overwhelm us. It has happened to me too. But what do we really need for painting? We need brushes, colors and a comfortable workspace. Brushes, workspace and color. So brushes, where are the brushes and how to paint and erase things, how to change their size quickly and how not to get lost among so many brush options? The Krita brush set is designed to fit the basic needs of anyone. First of all, it is good to make sure that everything is correct because it can happen that we activate the eraser mode by mistake and we don't remember it and suddenly the brushes don't paint and we can be confused. So verify that the eraser mode button is off. Ok, brushes are on the right side of the interface by default, but you can change where they are located just dragging the docker. If you close the brushes docker, you can restore it easily. Go to settings, docker, brush preset and Krita remembers his last location to be shown. The brushes may look like a lot, but you will want even more maybe in some days or weeks. Did they say that in Krita Shop there is a whole set to emulate oil, pastel and watercolor? Krita knows that a lot of brushes can overwhelm the user, so it has created a system of labels that can be used to see only some brushes oriented to specific workflows. Let's see how this works. For example, we have the paint, sketch, texture and so on. Each level has a few brushes related to that task. For example, the label textures has some brushes to help you to create fast textural effects. In future videos, we will see more things about brushes. Another way to look for brushes is using filtering. We can go deeper exploring brushes using the brush editor, for example, to learn about brush engines more. We will cover that in a common video. But maybe you don't like to have the brushes there, always visible like observing you. In that case, you can use the F6 keyboard shortcut or go to the drop down window at the top that will open a window with all your brushes. Here you can use the label system too. You still have another very interesting option. Sometimes we don't use more than 10 brushes. Imagine for example that we are drawing a full screen without any interface pressing tab shortcut. Then you press the right mouse button or the stylus button you have associated with right click. 
This allows you to see things like brushes, color, latest used colors, and also mirror the image, rotate the image, and more. This quick menu is really powerful, we will see that in another video too. You have chosen a brush. To change the size, press the shift key and drag the cursor to the right for increasing the size or to the left for decreasing the size. We can also do it throughout keyboard shortcuts, well it's nothing comfortable, or throughout the slider at the top of the interface, which is a good idea. One thing you are going to notice is that if you choose a brush and change the size, for example, you make some strokes and you say, hmm, this looks very good, a very good brush and I like it as it is. But if you select another brush and you reselect the previous brush, you will see that the brush it has returned to its previous state. In this case, your changes were not too much. But imagine that you start playing with the brush parameters and at the end you don't know what you have changed, exactly, but the brush result is very cool. In this case, this can be really annoying, isn't it? This is done for people who prefer to use the default brushes such as they are and without changing them too much. This is a good practice at the beginning because it helps you to understand better the difference between them and the possibilities you can have with a single brush. And that's the reason why Krita created the dirty brushes. Brushes that can remember your changes even if you change brushes again and again. To use this feature, we have to activate temporarily safe tweaks to presets in the brush editor. Krita will remember the settings until it closes, ok? If you want to save a modified version, just click on override button and that's it. You have your first modified brush ready to be used even if you close Krita. To be in a comfortable workspace, we need to know how to make the basic navigation like zoom, pan and rotate, and also horizontal mirror can be useful. In Krita we use by default the M key as a shortcut to mirror the view. That is really useful when we paint for a long time. Simple shortcut but a powerful feature, the color. When we are painting, we need a place to pick colors from. A place where you can choose different colors. For example, how do I make my color less saturated or brighter, for example? We can use Advanced Color Selector or use a custom palette. For now, we're going to leave that as it is, by default, because we will cover color in upcoming videos. Saving our images and work safe. A highly recommended practice is to save often, so please do it. All the software crashes sometimes, and well, I guess you have been drawing and testing the brushes that come by default. But what happens if we are so excited that we forget to save and suddenly the light goes out? Years ago that was a big problem, it makes you to redo everything again since the last time you saved your work. But we are a technological era, right? So that's why Krita goes further and help us. How? Every time you open an image and you are working on it, quietly Krita is saving your work. The program makes a copy of the file and takes care of saving the work every 15 minutes. Is that cool or not? I think it is. If we want to change that time, we have to go to the menu settings, configure Krita, general section and the file handling, and there we change the time. Let's do it. I consider that 5 minutes is a non-intrusive time for shaving. In the case that for some strange reason you want to deactivate this option, simply click on the ready button enable auto saving. I wouldn't do it, I, I'm not gonna do it, I can assure that. What if I want to save different stages of my work? Then we use the incremental save option, a cool name for a very useful feature. And why do I think it's so useful? Because if you notice, it has a circuit associated with it, which is Ctrl Alt S, and that way we just press the circuit and we create an incremental version of the file we are working on. If you like this type of tools that help productivity, let me know in the comments and give a crit a like.
Okay, that's the end for now. You have the basics, but there is much, much more. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video on your social media. And if you think this could help your friends and more crypto users, then share it. If you are interested in some specific topic or you want to suggest new topics, let me know in the comments below. And maybe this could be the next video. Thanks a lot for watching and be ready for new videos where I will be covering how to use Krita with more advanced features. Bye!